Well, 12 months ago, Russian tanks in the early hours of the morning rolled across the Russian border to start the illegal invasion of Ukraine. They, they did so with an ambition of effectively occupying and capturing the major cities within three weeks and then sending people who disagreed with them through filtration camps and effectively turning Ukraine into a client state of Russia. And I think what we've seen in the last 12 months is tremendous bravery by Ukrainian men and women standing to fight for their own country, tremendous brutality and war crimes inflicted on them by a Russian state still determined uh, to try and effectively destroy Ukraine, uh, but an international community that's solid. And at the heart of that solid effort has been Britain, her allies such as the United States, other European countries like France and Germany, Scandinavian countries and the Eastern Europeans such as Poland. It was about two, three in the morning and I had to go to a location uh, to get a, a classified briefing. And uh, I remember leaving really, really early in pretty fast speed in my police escorts uh, to take me uh, to to get to read in to what, what has, was happening and, and you know it was a war at the time you know people were we didn't know what was going to happen no one really knew how long Ukraine had to fight everyone uh, had underestimated them uh, obviously they were frightened in, in some account and we saw the scale of the Russian forces so it was really important there and then to see what we could do it was important to give them some lethal weapons to, to allow them to defend themselves and we put in very early on the N laws the, the, the light anti-tank weapons that are made in Belfast uh, and we start. We had put them in already, uh, which allowed us to then build on that to bring together an international group of donors. And I held the first donors conference about the day after the invasion. We had about 25 countries, mainly European, NATO countries, uh, and we started that momentum uh, of bringing real support to the people of Ukraine, both lethal and non-lethal aid. You know, we know, we are one of the few countries, we know what it's like to be outnumbered and alone uh, against an overwhelming aggressor. That was us in 1939. Remember, we, we stood on our own. We were outnumbered by the Luftwaffe. Uh, we were a country where you know, internally there was always these debates about did we seek appeasement? Did we seek an accommodation? And you know, if you remember, Winston Churchill very much took the view way before anyone else that we should be arming, rearming our country but also standing and fighting and, and, and evoked the sort of British spirit and I think you see that in Ukraine you know they are outnumbered they have they, that 65 percent of Russian armed forces now is 97 percent of that whole armed forces is committed uh, to trying to achieve victory in Ukraine 97 percent of the world's biggest country uh, and it's not having a success but that shows what they're up against and I think Britain and Ukraine have that common sense of shared experience. Britain is going to be there to the end with Ukraine. We're going to follow it through. We're going to keep standing by them. Uh, we will do all the things we can to help them succeed in making sure that Putin fails in Ukraine.